So this here, my friends, is the Sony FX30. Now, this was premiere released, I think it was September 2022. And ever since it was released, I've been raving on about this camera. It is crazily good, especially for the features that it's in. And it's got that cinema line badge, which actually gives it a lot of features that the FX3 has, the older, bigger brother in the full frame range, and also very similar to the FX6 as well. But this has that Super 35 or APS-C size sensor, which has its benefits, but it also has its cons. Now, one of the major cons that a lot of people didn't like when it was released was actually 4K in slow motion, 100 frames per second or 120. And the big thing is, is that the APS-C side sensor actually gets a crop. So if you're in 100 frames per second, it's like a 1.6 times crop on top of this 1.5 times crop body. So essentially this 50 mil turns into a 75 on a standard APS-C, but then you've got an extra 1.6 on top of that. So it's almost like a 100 to 105, maybe 110 millimeter lens. So the crop factor is a massive thing you have to take into consideration. And one of the cons about cropping in on that 6K sensor, it's no longer a downsampled sensor. You're actually going to introduce a lot more noise. And that's what a lot of people didn't like, is that the 4K 100 or 120 is actually quite noisy. And even if you expose it almost about blowing out the highlights, you're still going to get noise because the signal to noise ratio is actually quite high. And I'm actually gonna show you a trick that can actually fix the amount of noise that's in your image. But that's not all. We're gonna be comparing it against the a7 IV in 1080p at 100 frames per second versus the 4K in 100 frames per second. And the results are mind blowing. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this video. What's going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely amazing. Like I said, we're gonna be comparing the FX30 against the a7 IV when it comes to 1080p and 4K. And immediately you're gonna think 4K is way better. It's 4K versus 1080p. How has that got any chance? Now, because it does crop into the sensor, it is not downsampled. So it doesn't look as sharp as the normal 25 frames per second would. And there isn't a clear and obvious difference between this 4K and the A7IV's 1080p, but you can still tell that the 1080p just doesn't have that resolution in comparison to the 4K. But there is noise when it comes to this 4K 100 frames per second. So this is going down to ISO 200 in the expandable ISO, and that is on the left. You can see it's a little bit cleaner than regular S-Log at the base ISO at 800. But when it comes to being cleaner, sure it does have a lower signal to noise ratio, a noise floor, but it can't maintain the highlights as well as being at the base ISO 800. You're actually losing out on a little bit of dynamic range going into that expanded ISO range. But if you do try this trick, you will notice that your zebras won't actually work if you go below ISO 640. So when you go into ISO 500 in the expanded range with S-Log3, your zebras will completely turn off. So this can make it extremely difficult when actually exposing if you utilize zebras when you're exposing. Now, because of that reason with lower dynamic range, I wouldn't be using this in high dynamic range situations. Something like this where there are, you know, dark shadows and there are bright highlights because it is just not worth clipping your highlights and ruining your image. Ah, all right, now that we've got the noise talk out of the way with the FX30 and the A7 IV, we have to talk about that image quality. And you could see side by side 4K and 1080p, there is that difference and you can tell. But when it comes to the field, putting them side by side, I can't see any difference. I'd like to see what your thoughts are. Comment below, what are your thoughts? Putting these side by side, you pretty much can't tell any difference. Now, what I should have done, I had all the settings exactly the same, but we all know that the full frame sensor has a shallower depth of field when it comes to the FX30. Even if you equate for the lens uh, crop, you still have to equate for the aperture. And then obviously you have to adjust the light because you're cutting back on the light on the full frame sensor, which I didn't want to have to do that. I wanted to have the same settings and have the 24 millimeter on the FX30 and the 50 millimeter on the A7 IV. And that'll kind of give it a very similar focal length. I feel like the 1080p just looked the same. It, there wasn't any difference. If anything, just there was less noise because the FX30 is quite noisy as we discovered. And the 1080p, is, it was perfectly fine. You could really tell 
that depth of field difference between full frame and APS-C. So that kind of threw me out a little bit and that threw Amber out. I asked her, what did she actually like? And she actually said the one on the left, the A7 IV actually looked more professional. So it would have to be 4K. I'm like, nah, it's actually just that depth of field. You forgot about the depth of field and the APS-C versus full frame. Now this scene here is filming with my gym buddy Tyson and pretty much I put the a7 IV to f3.2 whereas the fx3 was in f1.6. Now that sort of equates for a very similar depth of field as you can see. And it is very hard to tell the difference between which camera actually is which. There is that slight resolution advantage to the fx30 but when there's so much more movement and action going on, it's really, really hard to tell the difference. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. So yeah, that was um, interesting. But when it comes to like the individual image, just seeing them uh, not side by side, you know, a7 IV or FX30, you can't tell the difference. 1080p just in the field, everything's moving so fast that you can't actually see the difference. If you are pixel peeping, then you're gonna notice obviously a difference. Yeah, definitely, like what we're doing right here. But if you're actually in the real world, shooting in 1080p, there's no difference. The only big difference that you will notice if you need 4K is CGI or tracking. Having that extra resolution will make a massive difference when it comes to tracking and putting CGI in there because you've got more information to work with. If you're doing some green screen stuff or keying, 4K, 6K, 8K will make a massive difference in comparison to 1080p. So that that is a big difference there. But you have to remember as well is that the a7 IV can shoot that 10-bit 422 in SNQ mode. And if it is 8-bit, that's the big difference because the colors will look absolute trash. The Sony colors in the 8-bit cameras were horrible when it comes to S-Log. It just wasn't usable. You actually had to use HLG or these Cine profiles. But now you've got the 10-bit 422 in 1080p, which makes it pretty much exactly the same. Color grading is perfectly fine. Matching them is perfectly fine. And if anything, just throwing it in there, you guys probably wouldn't even know a difference. <laughs> but I wanna know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, let me know, that would be amazing. And obviously give this video a thumbs up, that would be amazing. A lot of you guys aren't liking my videos, but if, I mean, if you do like it, give it a like, that would be great. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, let's get it.